Hi everyone, well uh, joining me today for our lovely warm fireside <laughs> chat in this beautiful Northern Irish summer is the Vice President and Managing Director of Allstate Northern Ireland, one of the big sponsors of TEDx here in Northern Ireland, John Healy. It's lovely to have you with us, John. Sarah, thanks very much. So first of all, how have you been coping uh, with lockdown? Oh, now there's a question and, and a half. Um, the company itself has been amazing, uh, you know, in terms of how it has coped. Uh, we made a decision as a company to get out of the office even before uh, the lockdown started and the response of our employees from the moment that we sent out the emergency notice uh, has just been tremendous. We're a technology company. We're pretty used to the idea of working from home and have the technology to allow us to work from home. Uh, and uh, people are used to it. So that definitely helped us. Uh, but to get everybody in the company out of the office and into their homes safely uh, has worked very well. So take us back to sort of pre-St. Patrick's Day when, when this was all evolving. You've got over 2,000 staff to, to look after yeah, in Northern so, Ireland. Uh, for, you know, just to give you a background on the company, uh, we've been here in Northern Ireland for over 20 years now. It was actually one of the first companies in here after the peace process and the ambition uh, way back in 1999 was maybe to get to 100, 200 people uh, in a technology organisation but over the years have been hugely successful in terms of uh, attracting, developing and retaining talent here and we've grown to be 2,400 people uh, and the largest technology company in Northern Ireland. We're based here in Belfast and we also have got 900 people up in the Northwest as well, so we're a very large employer uh, there too. You know, so it's a very large employee base to be getting out of the office, to be getting set up uh, at home uh, and, and operating. Uh, but as well as supporting the people here to get out and to get home, uh, the company here was helping our colleagues around the globe to get out of the offices in the US and India and uh, out into home uh, as well. And it's really amazing whenever you're sitting here in Northern Ireland and you're thinking about that global impact that you can have uh, from here. Uh, Obviously, and, it's, and an, they, it's they, an American company. It's an American insurance company. So do you take guidance as to, to you know, procedures and, and protocol from America, or do, is it based on you know, the local government? I know, in, in this kind of situation, it's got to be a, a mix of, of both. You know, there's a, a framework within which, yes, the, the, the corporate entity uh, operates, but you have to be totally alert to what's happening in your locale. You know, as, as, as this has unfolded, this pandemic has unfold, unfolded, uh, you know, there's a difference to how we're managing here compared to, say, how they're managing in the US or how our colleagues in Bangalore are, are managing in the, in the lockdown there. So, yes, there's a, a global framework within which we're all operating and, you know, processes and procedures uh, that, that the company would expect us to be mm -hmm. uh, operating but totally have to be mindful of the, the local dimensions uh, as well. Uh, and, you know, the company uh, has had two very uh, simple uh, philosophies to, 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 to for two very simple uh, values by which uh, it was going to operate. First, uh, that we're going to take things nice and slowly, better to be slow than to be fast. Uh, and then secondly, to put uh, the employees uh, and the customers first uh, in terms of their safety and that has been a really positive message for the employees you know they're all at home very productive working away and they know that there's no pressure on them to uh, get back in and into the the office and I think that's really important I think especially as say we get through to September and uh, we have the schools who are going to be trying to get themselves back into some new operating pattern and you know, it's going to be very difficult for our employees who are parents and have kids in schools uh, to be able to manage the, the different rotas. You know, you've got some schools that are going to be week on, week off. Others are going to be day in, day out. You have a couple of kids of a couple of different patterns, and that's going to be very complex. You know, so why should we um, put additional pressure on to, to the employees uh, in terms of changing that pattern? And as well as that, you've got the infrastructure uh, that people use to, to come into work, the trains, the buses. You know, people will, at this time, have maybe the confidence to push themselves into a packed train mm -hmm. 
uh, from Bangor to get into Belfast. And, and again, if people can work uh, just as well from home, why should I, as a as an employer, be be, be pushing people to, uh, to to put themselves into that kind of, of situation? So be better to be slow than fast and to have the employees right at the, at the, at the centre of all of our thinking. Uh, two, two very simple ideas, uh, but gives a great degree of confidence uh, to your employees around you know, what's expected of them. It's actually a great lesson f for other organisations who maybe uh, always have had their employees present and working from home was such a big change for them. But the fact that Allstate, I mean, you're a global insurance giant, but um, you know, your people mm. are, are used to, to working from home. Some choose to work from home and indeed Allstate has been lauded for the fact that it's provided that flexibility yeah. to working parents. So uh, Allstate has always had a very positive approach to flexible working. Uh, you know, we've had have all sorts of different patterns that, that our employees uh, are able to avail of. But this has really been testing us in, in terms of, of what is uh, achievable uh, and it's been really successful. And it also has busted so many myths uh, around what we can actually do whenever we're out of out of the office. A lot of people talk about oh the you know the the days of the the office are are dead and, and gone. Well, I think they are for the here and now as we try to work through this and uh, deal with uh, what's immediately in front of us. Uh, but in the future, you know, I think we're we're going to see a lot more of uh, that mix of, of people who maybe previously never would have thought of being able to work from home thinking, well, actually, I, I, I quite like it. I quite like uh, the additional time that it gives me at home uh, with my family, cuts out the commute, um, and actually fits in with, uh, with the, the way that uh, people want to lead their lives, uh, and we'll see the adoption of more flexibility. But I still think there's a very important part to play for the office. Uh, it provides that central hub where people can come, uh, that, that easy access, uh, to others to share ideas and to uh, do things in a, in a less kind of formal way because you know you're asking how do we get on I talked and went immediately to the company but you know for for the individuals as well some people are loving it but others not so much so because uh, in the workplace there is the social element uh, as well like coming together that idea that you're bumping into people that maybe you don't uh, get to see in the normal course of your uh, of your day uh, or you know that uh, somebody actually if you just a, a conversation in the lift sparks an idea that then might become uh, a product and you know, something that we deliver out to, to our customers and and you, you don't have maybe that that same kind of forum within which uh, to have that in the virtual world so I think it will the, the day of the office is definitely not dead but it definitely will change so there speaks the leader now let's speak to the man how did you cope with working from home Oh, it's, <laughs> it's 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 no secret, and uh, and uh, you know, but being at home means you have to do a lot more communication. You know, so what's your uh, family? Uh, well, <laughs> to your family, but you know, to to employees as well, and uh, I've shared with with the employees as well. It is not my preferred mode of working, uh, and and I say that uh, while at the same time acknowledging that I am really lucky and really privileged. You know, I'm I'm in a house where I've got a room apart from everybody else where. I am well set up with my office and all my equipment uh, and I can get away and it's nice and quiet and I'm able to, to work, uh, work away. You know, so I'm working in a fantastic environment to allow me to be successful, but it doesn't suit me in terms of who I am, how I like to uh, conduct my, my business. And I say that I'm very mindful of that because I know that there are lots of my employees and employees of companies right across uh, the, the, this, this, this country who are working in and, and, and going above and beyond in environments that are not just as conducive uh, to being able to uh, do, their, do their, their best work and yet they are really pushing themselves. You know, people who are sitting at the kitchen table doing their work or who are uh, in a bedroom uh, with, a, with the laptop or uh, who are having, you know, not now that we're in the summer, but you know, the most difficult part is mm -hmm. well, homeschooling, you know, and trying to get, keep the kids in, a, in some sort of, of pattern. You know, so I know that 
you know, while I'm sitting here giving out, but, oh, I, you know, I don't like this work from home. I'm well set up to work from home. And I know that there are so many people out there who are uh, really making this work uh, in, in difficult circumstances. And as I you know, do my uh, vlogs to, that I send out to, to employees and do the town halls and uh, you know, send out notes to people, you know, I, I am so mindful to acknowledge the sacrifices that people are making to, to make this, uh, th this work. And even beyond the, 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 the company, as you drive around, you know, we operate here in Belfast, we've got the offices in the northwest. We were very mindful quite early on in, the, uh, in, in this whole pandemic to take out billboard space, uh, to put up big thank you notices uh, to the essential workers. And that's not because we're selling anything here or we have a brand that we want to, to build here. Um, it really was about acknowledging the contribution that people beyond the company mm -hmm. are making to help to make us successful as well. You know, so you know the the uh, thank yous out there uh, to the healthcare workers, yes, who are at the at the uh, spear end of, of this pandemic, but also the the delivery people. We're relying on those. We're all at home, but we still need to get equipment yeah. out to people. Uh, we need to get work product out to people, uh, and you know the, the, that whole delivery mm -hmm. um, uh, infrastructure to, to support that. Uh, you know, is just such an, a, a valuable. Uh, part of the, the the fabric, and we wanted to acknowledge that the the teachers who are uh, still in there, you know, you know, helping the parents at home to homeschool their their kids. So uh, we we took a a decision that we wanted to spend some money, and yeah, billboard space maybe was cheaper because there was less uh, going on from a an economy perspective. Uh, but we wanted just to get that, that signage up there to acknowledge the contribution that people outside of the company were making to our success as well. Um, what is it about Northern Ireland that Allstate is so bought into? Is it the people? Is it the skills that we have here that make them people such good employees? So Allstate uh, here, it, it's, a ser it's a service company and that means it's all about the people. Uh, and you know that that that's what our business is. It's it's a people business, uh, and what you get um, as a foreign direct investor like Allstate into Northern Ireland is access to a fantastic talent pool. You know, and that's what Allstate has demonstrated over the twenty years from uh, in you know a small aspiration to get to one hundred, two hundred, up to where we are today with two thousand four hundred people. All of it uh, built on on skills. You know the. The focus that we have here on education, the great institutions that we have, not just the two universities, but also the, the further education infrastructure that's in place, really helps to support uh, and deliver skills into a business like, uh, like Allstate. And you know, as we get people through, uh, you only have to look at our figures around the tenure that our employees have. You know, the, the, there's a real loyalty in the in the workforce here. You know, yes, we're a great company, and we look after people, and we help and develop people through their through their careers. But the people here then pay that back. You know, in terms of the contribution that, that they make, uh, and we see that in terms of uh, how they have dealt with this pandemic and how they have absolutely. Uh, rallied around to, to make this a success. So have they all continued working? Uh, we have everybody wow. at home working. Working. Yes. So no and furloughing. No going furloughing on, right? okay. at all. And you know the, it'll, it'll be the same for others in, in in the sector. You know, an amazingly resilient part of the economy. You know, so everybody uh, at home working away. Companies like ours not availing of any of the the, the government's uh, schemes and. You know, able to maintain an incredibly high level of service back into uh, Allstate, the, the, the corporation. And obviously there are different job roles, but primarily what are the bulk of your people doing? What, do they, what service do they provide? So, uh, so you've got a, a multi-billion dollar enterprise in Allstate in the, in the, in the US. And uh, you know, I, I like any company today, uh, you know, underneath it and underpinning it and helping it to function is, is technology and that's what we deliver from here in Northern Ireland. So we are writing the software, uh, we are uh, supporting the, the infrastructure. Uh, I talked about how we helped our colleagues around the world. We have got um, a help 
desk function here, technology help desk for our agents in, in the US whenever they're having problems with technology. Uh, and uh, that help desk function here helped and supported uh, our workforce around the globe as they went home to help them to get connected and to maintain uh, that, that, that connection back into the, to the Incredible. infrastructure. I mean, obviously, as well, there will be a lot of uh, organisations have been seriously affected. A lot of businesses out there are, are worried now when the furlough scheme and the government help looks like it's ending in October. You know, will their businesses continue? For young people looking ahead now, I mean, many A-level students perhaps, you know, don't know if they're going to go to university, don't know what where to where to go now maybe some dreams haven't been realized those graduates coming out how would you sell going into technology or to a young person now you know what should they be studying to to go into something that there's some element of security you know you, you, there, there <laughs> is no still ball there, 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 there is uh, there's no such thing as a, a job for life anymore there's not something oh if i do this course or go down this path that somehow magically I'm now entitled to mm -hmm. uh, to a job. What, what I will say in terms of thinking about Northern Ireland and how it has transformed, you know, whenever I came through school and university, uh, you know, which was some time ago, uh, whenever I graduated here, I had two degrees and was unable to find a job here. You know, it was a so you completely had what, engineering and computer science, and, computer science, uh, and uh, unable to find a job in Northern Ireland. And I had to take myself off and uh, went off and started a, what, what turned out to be a fabulous career in technology in, in London. Uh, that is not the case mm -hmm. today for the graduates who are coming out of Ulster or out of Queen's or... Uh, you know, the, the, the kids who are going through uh, the, the new uh, modern apprenticeship uh, routes, uh, there is just uh, you know, so much opportunity out there in, in many sectors for uh, the, the, this generation that's coming through now to build amazingly successful global careers from here. You know, it's, an, it's a completely different uh, transformed value proposition. And actually, as we think about you know, what's, you know, we think about the world of work post this pandemic, I, I think we'll have another step change again, you know, because whereas uh, you know, we had this idea that you maybe had to be attached to an office to be able to go and build your career, uh, you know, it's not now beyond the realms of possibility that somebody coming out could maybe work for a company in Silicon Valley while being sitting in their a spare room in Balamina, you know, the, we, we've shown that we can operate in a, in, a, in a virtual way. Will that be fair for, for everyone? No, it won't. Of course it won't because people want the connection and, you know, that, that kind of team around you and, and, and so on. But it definitely opens up even more upper opportunity. So your question was around what would I say to kids coming through and... And know, their, their parents and, and their grandparents parents. who perhaps don't understand the I way I would say do not, do not despair. You know, yeah. there, there is uh, so much opportunity. And you look around uh, and you see all the businesses that, that have managed incredibly well through this crisis. And you go, that's great. You know, there's options in there. But other parts of the economy will come back uh, as well. You know, the, the, there will be you know, a, a, a vaccine out there somewhere. There will be a treatment out there somewhere that will allow us to get back to uh, some sort of, of normality back into, into our lives. Uh, and what I would say is that there, there's a lot of opportunity out there uh, and that uh, you know, people should be, you know, yeah, seeking out uh, the, the careers advice and, and you know, paying particular attention to uh, the types of courses that maybe that they're, that they're selecting for the here and now and have some sort of ideas to, as to where they're going to take them. Uh, but you know, I, I am a, I'm a great optimist, and and I, and I think that uh, you know, as we come out of this, uh, that there will be a, a whole ton of opportunity for us to tap into. Um, and you talked there a little bit about your trajectory and your career path. Um, Northern Ireland was a very different place back then. I would imagine we're of a similar vintage, and uh, you know, for many young people, we wanted to leave Northern Ireland to get a flavour of something else. Do you think think you benefited? from leaving Northern Ireland? Do you think travel was a good thing to get away from what was happening maybe at that particular time? Um, yeah, so I, I, I graduated out of, out of uh, Queen's and I started a, a job in, in London, went and did the job interview. It was for an investment bank sitting here in Northern Ireland. I had no idea even what an investment bank was. I can remember 
Uh, I was on the train home uh, for my Sunday lunches, uh, as was uh, maybe the, the, the way back in the day, back uh, sitting reading the Sunday papers, I saw this job ad, had all these exciting words on it, and I thought, oh, I'm going to go for that. But I had to go to the library and, and look up some of the terms. And, and you know, the, I can remember sitting in the Library of Queens looking up investment banking ahead of the uh, ahead of going for the for the interview uh, and I got on to a, a career path that has landed me in the in the seat I'm in today so yes it's worked out for me but I, I don't think you have to do that no. I, I think that uh, if, if there, you've got that sense of an adventure in you then absolutely go for it but the, the, the way that the economy here in Northern Ireland has developed the global companies uh, that have established their base here allows you now to be able to have a global Career, Did you always want local? to come home? Did you know you wanted to be back in Northern Ireland? Um, yeah, uh, so my wife, uh, well it wasn't my wife at the time, my, my girlfriend came with me to London whenever I got the job and she hated London. You know, I had this super job off and going, uh, you know, she had her job and I was thinking well actually I'd much rather be doing that same job at home if you don't mind. Uh, so uh, she came back and I was a very early adopter of, of telecommuting, you know, so back in uh, the early 90s, it was doable to be able to rock up to the, the city airport and, and fly across. There wasn't just quite the, the same amount of, uh, of rigour and, and process around uh, getting through and onto that, onto that plane. Um, so I flew back and forward uh, to, to London and then ended up running a, a group up in, in, in Glasgow. Uh, and you know that yeah that was that was great really exciting uh, but I knew that uh, you know there had to come a time whenever I would be be here on a on a more full time basis and you know the fact that companies like City were here where I spent a large part of my career and now at all stayed here uh, has been fantastic for me and also uh, you know your em employees they're not all from Northern Ireland and you're attracting a lot of people who want to come and live. And work here and what do they say to you about Northern Ireland when they come here? Well here is a, is a, a great uh, employee value proposition for anybody uh, you know there are companies like mine uh, who are, are who have got great jobs that are very well paid uh, and at the same time you're able to avail of you know fantastic uh, schools uh, house prices here are very uh, affordable uh, whenever you want to get out of town, uh, it's very easy to get to the coast, to the hills, uh, to, to wherever, you know, to be able to uh, avail of uh, that kind of extra, extracurricular type activity. You know, where else can you, can you get that? You know, you're, you sit in London and, and yeah, you're getting a good salary, but you're uh, having to live in a, in a tiny apartment and you're having to slog your way through town. Uh, and uh, God knows where you're going to get your child into into school whenever it comes to uh, that time in your in your life, you know. So here has got so much to offer uh, beyond just the, the just the job, and you add all those bits together, and you know the question almost becomes, why wouldn't you want to build your build your career here? And and I think that we need more people to be thinking like that. You know, we we've uh, always had this brain drain. Out of, out of Northern Ireland, you know, people who are taking their skills, their talent elsewhere, uh, and that's at, at all levels, you know, whenever people leave school and they leave, whenever they get qualified, they leave, you know, and, and we need to uh, get those people back into here to bring their skills back to help be part of building the, the type of economy that we want to have here, the type of society that we want to have here as well. You sound like you're in a very strong position and all state is in a very strong position and I suppose maybe it's it's nearly too early to reflect on what has actually happened but if if I told you this time last year that we would have had this massive economic shock and this global pandemic you wouldn't have believed it. Do you feel that we will build back stronger and better? Um, I, I, as I say I'm an optimist and, and I absolutely do believe uh, that if we take uh, you know, the, and, and take time to learn the lessons of, of uh, you know, some of the things that maybe weren't working, uh, that actually we do have an opportunity to, to build back better. And, and I think that we should be thinking about how do we build back fairer uh, as well. 
Um, I, I, if you look at, you know, you know, I said earlier on about we were really purposeful, you know, we wanted to say thank you uh, to all those essential workers, you know, the, 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 the care workers, the, the, the delivery guys, the, the teachers, the, the nurses, uh, you know, they're all professions that have been maybe undervalued uh, in, the, in the economy. And the hairdressers, where would we be without the hairdressers? <coughs> well, I, think I, I think I'll do all right without the hairdressers. <laughs> this, is, this is my wife's very best work. I'm impressed. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we, we, the, the, the dog clippers got a bit of exercise <laughs> over, over lockdown. Uh, but, no, I think we, we have to think about what do we really value in, in society uh, as well. And, yes, you've got to have a strong economy and behind it and strong businesses that are generating wealth and paying taxes and helping to, to fund it. Uh, but I do think we have to think about things in a different kind of, of way. One of the things that we've been really good at here in Northern Ireland, what we've really demonstrated is our resilience. You know, we, we've managed through this crisis particularly well. You know, it might not necessarily feel like that, but as you look at other places, I'd say that, that we're in pretty good shape. Uh, and uh, I talk to other uh, business leaders out there and, and, and peers, and you know they're faring quite quite well. You know, ones who are in the same in the same sector, uh, and I think that we should think about that that resilience and you know place a place a value on that uh, as well. And you know, whenever we get into thinking about how we procure things, we need to move away from just thinking about procurement as the lowest cost that we need to add that dimension of value into it as well. You know, the resilience that we have demonstrated through this crisis has got a value. What weight do we put on that? You know, so we need to be thinking about, well, you know, how does the central procurement department within government now evaluate contracts and, and how it would award it? Is it just on who has comes in with the lowest price or what do we uh, attribute to, the, to, to, to value? Uh, and then we've again got to think about, uh, you know, the other agendas that are that are really important and coming through you know the environment was building uh, as a really important uh, agenda item for business to be, to be thinking on oh well, here's a great opportunity as we think about how we want to do our business in the future to have the environment front and center in that and and to accelerate our discussion around it you know as, as we come back for example are we going to want to push ourselves on to uh, pack trains and buses I don't think so. I don't think so. So what now as business is our role in terms of supporting people who want to maybe get healthier, want to cycle to work? You know, what are we doing in terms of enabling that, provisioning that, uh, and supporting uh, the, the employees as they, as they think about how they want to conduct uh, their lives into the, into the future uh, as well? It sounds to me that being a compassionate leader is very important to you, leading with empathy. Um, and I suppose as a society, we, we all need leaders who, who empathise and everybody is, is, is walking a different life and we don't know what's going on behind people's doors. Um, what's the most valuable piece of business advice that you could give anyone leading through this difficult time? And it still is a difficult time. Oh, no, there's a, that's, there's a, a big that's, that's a very tough question. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I think that, you know, I, I'm sitting there quite literally in the attic of, of, of my house leading a 2,400 person organization. You know, you just cannot do that as a, as a single individual. You have to have trust in your, in your workforce. Uh, you have to, and you can't just uh, you know, kind of magic that overnight. That that is something that you have to to build and and, and to build that that foundation. Uh, and if you are empowering in your leadership uh, and allow others to to step forward in, in difficult circumstances, then guess what? They will. You know, they will go that extra mile. They will work out. Well, how do we get round uh, these new problems that are that are presenting themselves? Uh, how do we get over those those barriers? You know, so. Uh, I would say that really allow your leaders, the, the people who, who work for you down through your through your businesses, to get on and do your job. You know, to, to get out of their way and I'll let them bring their best selves uh, to work. John Healy, thank you so much for joining us by the fire. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much.